Hello, my name's Tanam Shaw and I'm from the University of New South Wales. Today we're going to be looking at a problem from the complex number chapter of the Math 1131 algebra course. So it's problem 76. We're asked to find all the roots of this polynomial equation. We've got a quintic here. We want to solve it equals zero and they're giving us the fact that 1 plus i is a root of this polynomial f of z. So the first thing we need to notice is that the coefficients of f of z are real. Since the coefficients of f of z are real, well, what's that mean? It means that if we've got a complex root, 1 plus i, its conjugate is also a root. And that's quite a useful fact. So, um, if 1 plus i is a root, 1 minus i is also a root. Okay, so complex roots come in conjugate pairs as long as the coefficients of your polynomial are real, which they are here. Okay, so what we have then is that x minus 1 plus i, x minus 1 minus i, is a factor of this polynomial f of z. So we have two complex conjugate roots and this quadratic is a factor. You can expand this and you can um, simplify it. Another way to do it just slightly quicker is to realise that this polynomial, and I should be using z's rather than x's, otherwise we're going to get confused. This polynomial is z squared minus the sum of the roots times z plus the product of the roots. So this is the sum of the roots. And this is the product of the roots. That's just a slightly quicker way of ex expanding it if you can see what the roots are. And then you don't need to write this down. However, you can and you can expand it. In any case, the sum of the roots, 1 plus i plus 1 minus i, that's 2. The product of the roots, 1 plus i times 1 minus i, that gives us a difference of two squares, 1 squared minus i squared, that's 1 squared, 1 minus minus 1, that's 1 plus 1, which is 2. So that's the product of the roots that goes in there. So if we know 1 plus i is a root, we know 1 minus i is a root because the coefficients are real. So we know z squared minus 2z plus 2 is a factor. Now if it's a factor, we can use long division um, to work out the rest of the factors. So we have our polynomial z to the 5 minus 2z to the 4 plus 2z cubed minus 5z squared plus 10z minus 10. And we're dividing out z squared minus 2z plus 2. Now this turns out to be a very easy factorization um, because there are z cubed, z squareds in z to the 5. Multiplying this out, we actually get z to the 5 minus 2z to the 4 plus 2z cubed. They're exactly the same. So when you subtract, all subtracts to 0 and we just have to bring this down here. When we do it again, how many z squareds are in minus 5z squared? Well, just minus 5 of them. I usually put them in line with where I'm up to, but obviously you can put it over here. When we multiply this out, we actually get exactly the same thing. Minus 5z, z squared, plus 10z, minus 10. And that subtracts away. We, hope, we expect a remainder of 0 because we know that it's a factor. Um, but now we know that x cubed minus 5 is another factor, right? That's the quotient. So what we're doing is we're solving f of z equals 0. But now we know how to factorize f of z. It's z squared minus 2z plus 2 times z cubed minus 5. Okay, and we're going to solve this is equal to zero. It's much nicer factorized. Now, you might have got this factorization from the very beginning, even without possibly this hint that 1 plus i was a root. And that's because if you look at these six terms up here, 
The first three you can factorise out an x cubed. The second three you can factorise out a minus 5. And when you do that, you're left with the same um, z squared minus 2z plus 2 from this and from this, right? So you could kind of do a grouping in pairs to get this anyway, even without the hint and without the long division if you did notice that. However, if that kind of didn't happen, the long division would always work. In any case, we're trying to solve this equals zero. So if two things multiply to give zero, we either have z squared minus 2z plus 2 equals zero, or z cubed minus 5 equals zero. Well, we already know the answers to this because they were our original 1 plus i and 1 minus i that we had. Now, z cubed minus 5 equal to 0. There's essentially two ways to solve this. We could do it in modulus argument form. This is z cubed equals 5. So what we're trying to do is find the cube roots of 5. So we could do it that way. Uh, but we can do it in Cartesian form just because this is a cubic, like a cubed minus b cubed. I know how to factorise that. So you could do it that way as well. I'm going to do it that second way, but both ways will be fine. So how do we factorise this? Well, uh, a cubed minus b cubed factorises to a minus b, that's just the cube root of 5 there, times a squared plus ab plus b squared. Right. So a cubed minus b cubed, we have a formula for factorising that. It's just that b is that cube root of 5 there. So I'm just using that formula to factorise this, and we're trying to solve this equal to 0. Well, if that's equal to 0, then either z equals the cube root of 5, or, well, this quadratic equals 0 should give us two other solutions, and then we would have the 5 altogether. So now what we need to do is solve the quadratic but I have the quadratic formula, and so that should be easy to do. So let's just solve this quadratic over here. z squared plus the cube root of 5z plus the cube root of 5 squared equals 0. So our quadratic formula gives us z equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, the c is all of that squared, all over 2a. So we're just using the quadratic formula, hopefully that fit on the screen. Here we have minus the cube root of 5 plus minus. Now here we have cube root of 5 squared minus 4 of the cube root of 5 squared. So altogether I have minus 3 of them. So all together, I have minus 3 lots of the cube root of 5 squared, all over 2. So um, just dealing with this thing, we have the cube root of 5 squared. Well, I can square root that. That can come outside as the cube root of 5. And then we're left with the square root of minus 3, but I know that's root 3 times i. So we'll have minus the cube root of 5 plus minus the cube root of 5 times the square root of 3i over 2. And we can factorise the cube root of 5 out, um, and we can write it all over 2, a bit more like a 3, so the cube root of 5 over 2, and then we would be left with minus 1 plus minus square root of 3i. Okay, so there's the solution to our quadratic. So let's just put them all in a row here. So we have these two answers. We have the cube root of 5. We have two more here. One is the cube root of 5 over 2 times minus 1 plus root 3i. And the other is the cube root of 5 over 2 outside of minus 1 minus root 3i. So there are our five answers all together. 1 plus i, 1 minus i, it's missing as z equals. Cube root of 5, cube root of 5 on 2. These little threes are hard to keep up the top. And our fifth one 
is written down here. So we've got all the solutions to our polynomial equation f of z equal to 0.